very ferocious, very feared by anyone, but look how peacefully they sleep. They Here we've got a pride of lions. So this is a group of two girls that we can see he, from here. I think there might be a third one just behind the bushes that I, and I can't see. And I've counted about maybe six cubs. It's hard to tell because, well, as you can see, they're all in between the trees having a very, very nice afternoon siesta. This is pretty much where we left them this morning and um, if they've moved about maybe a meter just to, you know, go sleep on the other side, then that's pretty much everything they've done for the last six hours or so. <laughs> so it just proves that they've been having a very nice afternoon so far. I don't think they get to complain. You see we've got them all in there sleeping together. See the female on the one side also? They are not bothered at all by us being here. As you can see, they didn't even open their eyes. And they are perfectly aware of the fact that I'm here with Seb and that we're talking and that very likely they're very famous lions because everybody's looking at them from across the world. But it doesn't really bother them. They've grown up very used to, to cars moving around. So they just don't really care. It's like a dog when you go home and if it's used to you coming in and out, they don't really wake up. Oh, there's a nice stretch. Hello. One of the youngsters almost seemed like it wanted to maybe move on to the other side, but not really. Hmm. All of them sleeping. I always feel bad. You don't want to disturb them. They've chosen a very good spot. I mean, not ideal for us to see them because it's a bit complicated. But uh, the mothers, the two big girls that we're seeing around, they were very intelligent and they came around and they just put them all in this little area. And we were actually trying to think which way we could go to see if maybe we could see them better. But it's all surrounded by trees. So it's almost like they are in the middle of a castle and it's hard for us to see them from any angle. And this they did on purpose because obviously by having the, the little ones they've got to look after them and they've got to make sure that when they go to sleep it's in places that well it's not going to be too sunny because they don't like being hot but also in a place where they can hide from anything else that may come around there were some elephants moving around in the area earlier so if the elephants had bumped into the into the lions likely the elephants would have chased them away but i think you know this little hideout where they've decided to spend the day has actually worked out in their favor it's very hard to see them <laughs> you wanted to know how much does a lion weigh? Well, it depends if it's a boy or a girl. The boys are heavier than the females. I think the record or the heaviest lion that there's ever been, if I am not mistaken, was in one of the reserves uh, south from here called Pinda Game Reserve. And I think it was a lioness and she was maybe about 300 kilograms, which is very, very, very heavy for a lion. Um, males are normally just below that, I would say maybe 250 kilograms or so on. Depends which book you read, but normally they're just a lot heavier than us. Maybe a few times what we can weigh. Can you imagine? They are very big animals. They've got to be very strong to be able to hunt and bring down animals and walk as much as they do. So they've got to make sure that they have the size for it. These girls are having the best sleep. Madison, you are wondering how baby lions get food and what they eat. Well, it's very much like human babies or if you have a kitten or anything at home. You see, when they're very, very small, it's uh, they drink the mother's milk and that's what they, that's what they feed or that, upon. That's what they eat. So they get bigger and bigger and bigger up to when they get to a stage when they're about a few weeks old. Just like a, any puppy that you might have or even if you have a kitten and then they'll start eating food, proper food. In this case, because they are wild animals, then the mothers go out hunting and they will leave them somewhere like this, secluded uh, hideaway, where if they go, nothing is gonna come, where they have a good chance of hiding away from any potential enemy. And then the mothers uh, make a kill, where they hunt an animal down and then the they come. They take the little ones and they take them to wherever it is that they've managed to bring down so that they can start eating meat. 
So up to a few months old, they will have a combination of two things. They will have a bit of meat that they'll eat from when the mothers manage to hunt anything or take them to the food that they've brought for them. And uh, will obviously have uh, a little bit of milk. Because once they get a bit too big, or if there are too many of them, it's very, very hard for just one uh, lion mother to feed them on milk. All right. I think they're they're quite sleepy around here. We're gonna see if maybe we can find a better spot to have a look at the little cubs that are sleeping more to the right. And while we try to find a way around this castle of wood, then let's go to Taylor and see what she's managed to find so far. Alrighty, it seems like we did manage to find a better look for them. We just had to do a very, very big loop around them just so that we didn't disturb them. Oops, sorry about that. And there they are, all sleeping. So you see we've done a bit of a loop around. There are a few that almost have their heads up. Wonder if we go back, if we'll be able to see them. See them there to the... Let's just try quickly. See if maybe we manage to, if I haven't forgotten how to drive yet, which is no promise so far. Oh, hello. I think maybe from here we'll be able to get a closer look at them. Hello, pretty girl. <laughs> so she found the best spot and then she just pretty much pushed the little cub away because she wanted to sleep there. <laughs> it's almost like a big pajama party. They're all together and they all want a particular spot. So the best way to get into that spot is just to lay on top of whoever it is in your spot. <laughs> that is quite something having them all around there. Kenzo, you'd like to know what animal eats a lion? Um, hmm, not too many. <laughs> no, normally there's nothing that will actually eat a lion for food, so maybe other lions will kill lions, but they won't kill them because they want to eat them because they consider them food in a normal case. Uh, what would sometimes happen is there's another pride of lions that comes into this area and because they're very, it's almost like a war game, they want the area where these lions are in so they will come and they will try to kill as many lions as they can so that they can keep this particular area and the water and all the animals that are here that they can eat. But there isn't any particular animal that will hunt lions like the same way for example that a lion will go and hunt a buffalo or will go and hunt a wildebeest like the one Taylor was looking at. Normally they're, they're pretty safe. They just have to worry about other lions and perhaps maybe if the cubs are very very small and they get left by themselves, uh, maybe leopards, elephants can be a bit of a problem but because they are predators and a lot of animals are scared of them when they get big, a lot of animals will just try to, to get rid of them when they're little, but they won't kill them to eat them. I don't think lion meat tastes that good, to be honest. I've heard it's 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 not the best. <laughs> Look at all of them sleeping like that. Molly, have the lions ever let me pet them? Uh, that is a big fat no. These animals that we're looking at, they are wild animals. So they're not like the ones that you see in the zoo or perhaps in those videos on YouTube that they have, you know, human friends or that they somebody has them like a dog. These are lions that are very, very nice to us because they let us see them and we can come around with a car and then if we stay in the car and we don't get out and we don't stand up and we don't jump out of the car, they have absolutely no problem with us being around. But if I were to jump down and go and pet them, I have no doubt that one of the mummy lions would get very, very upset with me and would try to attack me just to protect her young ones because they're not used to people walking around. This is their area and this is their territory and this is where, you know, they are the kings and queens. So they don't really take it easy for anyone to come around. So no, I have actually never pet a lion um, I, and this ones will definitely not let me. These are, and we, we prefer to have it that way because it means that they are really, really wild animals and we just get to see them and what they do and what they get up to without having to really interfere. If we could pet them and, you know, just walk around with them, it would be pretty cool. 
but it wouldn't be real. It wouldn't be the way that they are. So we prefer to see them from here and we just let them be the exact same way nature intended them, them to, you know, just carry on with their lives while we just watch them from from a distance. They are, they look very cuttable, <laughs> especially the tiny little cubs, they look very fluffy like teddy bears. But when they grow up, then you don't really want to be cuddling them at all, not even when they're small. Because if they get used to people, you can imagine that they're not gonna fear people and they're gonna come a bit too close. And an animal that's that big, sometimes they might even mean well. But uh, can you imagine a lion hug? You know, something that weighs almost the size of if you if your mom's got a small car, imagine like a small car coming to jump at you and give you a hug. I'm sure that would hurt. So no, we try not to not to pet the lions or any other wildcat for that matter. We just like seeing them from here and just imagine how nice it would be, but we never do. It would be quite funny though if we could and just go and sleep in there. I wonder if my long hair would confuse them and they'll think that I'm a lion. I don't think I will ever try though. I'd rather live to tell the tale. <laughs> oh, sleeping together. Only the one that we're seeing there on the left is just busy. It seems like he's cleaning himself, giving himself a bath. It seems like maybe in one of its paws. Sometimes they get little things in be stuck in between like little thorns or grass or everything else so they use their tongue to get rid of it. But not too, not too sure what he's got in there. Sometimes also they get like little ticks the same way a dog does or fleas and they just like getting rid of them. Oh, there's a bit of a yoga stretch going on. Very flexible things. Right, we're gonna stick around with them for a little while longer just to see if any of them decide to pop their head up and just um, say hello. But in the meantime, let's go to Taylor and see if she's had any luck at finding anything else. We do have some very nice views of the cubs. It seems like they have decided to move a little bit now that it's nice and cool. And they've actually been very nice to us and they've moved a bit more into the open area. So it's very, very nice because now we can see them clearly. So they're just doing a very, very typical thing that lions do when they start waking up, which is um, they start grooming themselves and each other and yes, and yawning. Normally when animals yawn, it's a good sign that they're going to be a bit more active than what they've been because when you yawn, there's a lot more oxygen that's being pumped into your brain. So you, you know, you get out of that slumber and you start just waking up, opening your eyes and just being more alert of what's around you. If you see a female, there's clearly something in the distance that she's heard of, that she's just keeping an eye out and the cub learning from the mother, clearly looking in that direction. I wonder what it is. We didn't see too much on the way over here. We just spotted a kudu, but it was still at a distance from here. So I'm pretty sure that's not that. But look, they're all looking at something. There is a cub that is just underneath the bushes, roughly in the direction where they're looking. But I'm not too sure if that is really what they're looking at. There's a cub. Being a bit shy. Away from, away from the rest. So I'm not too sure. I think they initially were looking at something else and then at the cub. Oh, well, hello. Oh, yes. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at all those little ones. You can see how big they are compared to the mothers. Ah. I wonder, they're definitely not looking at the cub. I think there's something else that spiked their interest and I can't really see from here what it is. I'm just going to wait for them to make their next move in case they are looking at something so that we don't spook them or anything. But I can't believe how much these cubs have grown. I think the last time I saw the Inkahuma cubs was actually when I came for my interview drive, which was almost like 10 months ago. Can you guys believe that? So I'm very happy to see them all looking so healthy and so big. Oh, and there is the one that Taylor was mentioning that had a floppy ear. It's actually the one that we were looking at earlier on. Interesting. Sometimes it's, you know, they just get a floppy ear temporarily or sometimes the ears just break a little. Oh. No, I think the ear seems to be fine. It's just me not being able to see from a distance. <laughs> They've all... I just... 
wonder what they're looking at. Jenny, it'll be still a while before the cubs start hunting on its own. So if, because they're still predators, if they see anything around them when they're, you know, in their slumber, they might still attempt to try and catch it, but they will only start participating in the hunts with the mothers once they're older. Normally, when they're about a year, year, a year and a half, that's when the mothers start allowing them to have an active role in the hunts. Let's put it that way. Like we saw this morning, the cubs were around. I'm sure they were just observing and that's the way they learn. Because obviously there's a certain technique involved in the way of lion pride hunts. So they... Ah, oh. did you guys hear that, that bark? I think maybe that's another kudu that's in the distance, and that's what they were looking at. Okay guys, I'm just gonna shut up for a little bit, see if maybe we can hear anything else and just see how this plays out for everyone involved. They're starting, they're imitating the mothers. There it is, it's barking again. So that's the alarm call from one of the antelope. I would put my guess on a kudu. That's just spotted the lions. And you hear, it sounds like a dog barking. And all the lions have gone very, very still. I want to try and see maybe with the binoculars if I can see a bit further ahead. It is amazing how they can, they clearly know what's there. Very likely they can see it and smell it, and we can't. He said, <laughs> pretty much how useless we are as humans. I think it's, by judging by the sounds, I think this animal is leaving. He sounds further and further away now. They're starting to relax a little bit now. I think whatever it was that was looking at them, probably a kudu, has just gone a bit further away because I can feel some of the females have relaxed. Their body language is not the same as before and the cubs are definitely looking a bit more relaxed than what they were now. Because it was funny, even one of the little cubs was standing so still, he, he got caught with one of the paws, the back paws still, and he hadn't stepped and he just stayed there frozen, avoiding to make any move. Do you see how alert she still is? Could be that, you know, this kudu has given them an idea of where to start hunting. I mean, you guys saw them this morning on the sunrise safari. They were busy looking at some buffalo and they even attempted going at two of them. However, the buffalo escaped. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just actually take it upon themselves to find something else tonight. There's an animal stroll barking. I don't know where it is. I think this noise is coming straight ahead from where we are. still quite at a distance. I mean, I'm using binos now to try and see if I can figure out where, where it is. I can't see it. So I'm sure it still managed to put some distance between the lions and itself. <laughs> Obviously, you know, when there's a hungry pride of lions around, the last thing you want to do is just hang around. Hmm. 
can see, look how incredibly well that camouflage works. I mean, that little cub is just hiding beneath a tree. Very, very small tree. If you were to look at it, you would be like, ah, you know, who can actually hide under that? But this beautiful golden grass at this time of the year just works in their favor so much better just to hide them away. And I'm sure they're going to be making full use of that later on tonight. So as we were discussing, they are opportunistic animals, so they can hunt pretty much at any time of the day. And in this case, when the when the kudu started barking, or when they smelt it, they always started and they were looking in that direction and they sat very still. So had it come closer and perhaps not seen them, I don't doubt that they would have tried to take an opportunity to try and bring it down. Now, um... Fergie, you're wondering about the black patches that we see behind their ears. So there are a number of theories about why they have black um, on the tip of their tails and behind their ears. But it seems like the, mo the most accepted theory is that, that they act as a follow me signs. So if you can see now, imagine, you know, try to think of this as more black and white monochromatic type of environment. The black patch would be easier to focus on, especially for little cubs trying to follow a mother in the long grass. It's easier if they have something that's a bit of a beacon just to follow and, and know where to go. So it seems like, you know, like the the black behind the ears and the black on the tip of the tail, it helps the pride see each other, especially where they're working, uh, walking in, in long grass. Just some other animals have it. For example, there's a species of antelope that has a white ring around their rump. It's got a camouflage purpose, but also, you know, considered a follow me sign. You'll see the leopards will have the, a white tip of the tail that's easier for the cubs also to follow. So there's always something like a very... Um, prominent marking that will make it easier for them just to keep track of one another. So you see, this is a, an invaluable lesson for these cubs as they start learning how to hunt and how to be independent lions. So what normally would happen in the lion world is that the females will stay in their natal pride or they'll stay in the pride that they were born into, but the males, once they get start getting, you start getting older around about one and a half, two, three years old, depending on every pride, they're going to be chased off by, by the females and they're going to have to pretty much try and make it on their own for a couple of years until they become strong enough to take a pride in a territory of their own. But um, today I think what we've seen in the morning and this afternoon just proves just how they, they don't stop learning. We've seen them sleeping the whole day, but they also have their own... It's like they're private lessons that they need to attend to and this is invaluable and obviously they've already learned a lot from the mothers as soon as the kudu started barking the, you know they were all looking in one direction clearly they picked something up before we did and before the kudu started barking and they all sat down very very still even the ones that were moving stopped moving and you know like i said earlier they were left with the paws mid-air and now they're all sitting down and you see they've relaxed but whatever it is that's around it's probably not that far because they're all still sitting, looking in that direction, very, very still. I'm not too sure what they're, if they're still there. Um, we're going to carry on with the lions and just we'll keep you posted if they do get up or if they go back to sleep. But while we wait for them to get a bit more active or decide if they're going to go for the hunt, maybe this little one is the one that's feeling more optimistic. Let's think back to Taylor, who I believe is looking at a very, very beautiful sunset. We could never, ever get bored of Taylor's games, come on. Um, but uh, we are here. I think the lions, however, did get tired of the kudu game because they've gone back to grooming themselves and they're just a bit more relaxed now. The cubs are busy on their own, just a bit further in between the bushes, also grooming themselves and everyone's just back into a very relaxed mode. I think the kudu decided that this was definitely not the area to spend the night in and I'm sure he's moved up because we haven't heard him again and the lions definitely don't seem as interested as they were earlier on. But who knows, it's a good it's a good starting point for them in regards to where to start looking for food tonight. And they're definitely hungry and in the, on the prowl. So 
I'm sure maybe later on today we'll be able to hear them. They're, funny enough, they're not too far from camp, so I wonder if maybe we'll get lucky, you know. We'll, we'll hear them roaring throughout the night. I know sometimes, you know, we get very spoiled and we complain because like, oh, the lions started roaring at 3 o'clock in the morning and we couldn't go back to sleep. And then we go out and drive and they've t crossed onto somewhere else. <laughs> but I suppose that's the life we live in and there are bigger concerns in life. We are just very spoiled people, aren't we? Seems like the girls are all scattered around here. Um, I can just count three. One, two, three lions and the rest of them are just a bit to the left of the screen but I don't think we'll be able to see them because they're in a bit of a complicated area. Very thick bush around here and I don't want to go pretty much Buddha bashing all around because I don't think that's gonna actually give us a better view. I think where we are is probably the best one for the time being. They have, they have chosen a very good place to rest. I mean, this area has kept them in the shade the whole day. And it's a good, it's a good time to, it's a good area to hide out when they start looking for food. Um, but let me, I'd like to know when they would get active. Well, this is them being active or starting to get active. Normally, if lions are not active, they are lying flat on their side and not opening an eye. If they do much, they'll probably roll onto the other side, and that is them when they're sleeping. Um, it does take them a while, and it's not like, for example, they're not always hunting and looking for things and running and attacking and all these things. A lot of the times, they start like this very, very easily into the night with a very nice grooming session. They'll start yawning, they'll go and greet each other. You know, they've been sleeping for good six to eight hours already so very likely they were feeling a bit you know they're in that slumber you know when you sleep for a very long time and you wake up and you're lazy and you go to the kitchen you grab a cup of coffee you say hello to your family and this is pretty much the same thing so unless there's something that comes uh, their way and you know wakes them up very quickly they just like to take it easy and then they'll start moving around Normally, they try to avoid being active during the heat of the day because uh, it's uh, it gets too it, they spend too much energy that way and they can overheat very easily. They don't sweat like we do. Um, they're more like cats and dogs in that regard, where they have to pant and use their breathing to regulate their body temperature. So when it's very very hot, it's they just pretty much lay down in the shade of a tree and spend the day away there. But now that it's winter and it's the days are starting to get shorter and the nights cooler then they spend a lot more time moving around which is great for us because then we get to see them doing a lot more like this beautiful mother grooming her cub isn't that sweet just making sure he gets a bath apparently he's over that stage where they're like no no i don't want to i don't want to and he's now decided that this is probably a good thing <laughs> See, this is very important for the lions. All of this bonding and the grooming one another, it's just it just helps maintain very good relationships and just make sure that pretty much everybody else knows that they're in the pride together and then they've got each other's backs. It's a good way of keeping good relationships. <laughs> now we've got the two girls in unison. They're doing exactly the same thing at the same time. That is quite funny. I don't think you guys can see the one behind of the tree because it's a bit complicated but they're both there. Ah, then there's a very sleepy cub <laughs> that's decided that it's still not worth it to wake up. very thorough when it comes to cleaning themselves. They're very, very hygienic animals. You can always see them in the mornings and in their afternoon. They go through these very thorough grooming sessions and baths and then just get rid of all of the little parasites, the dust, the ground, the little rugs, anything that might be on their skin that's or on their fur that's not supposed to be there. It is quite amazing though how blend in there are with their environment. Very, very hard to spot them. I don't think if we came tonight and if we didn't know that they were here from this morning, likely we would just drive by them and miss them all together. Luckily for us, sometimes the black on their ears is what gives them away. Ah, you 
you see that what she's doing there? She's not um, growling or anything. She was doing what's called a flum and grimace. So when they put their teeth up or they expose their teeth and they put their lips up like that, what's happening is likely she's caught a scent, something that she can smell, and there is an organ at the roof of the palate called the Jacobson's organ. And while she does that funny face, she's just forcing all those smells to go into that organ so she can see what's happening, who's around, what condition they're in, and so on. So a lot of the times, the animals do it, especially if they're smelling um, another animal's urine, because there are a lot of pheromones and hormones floating around that they can use to decipher everything that's around them. We don't necessarily smell it. Um, we used to, apparently, or well, we still have some trace of that organ in our palate, back to where we were more primitive humans, but we don't make use of it anymore. In the meantime, while these girls decide to finish their beauty bath, let's go to Brent and see if he's got something that the lions could potentially eat one day. Hmm. Well, as you can see, the getting active process is taking its time. <laughs> We're patiently waiting for them to, you know, see something else. Yes! Oh, I love it when they put me wrong. Hello! Such a nice stretch. <laughs> you see, they are looking very healthy, yet their tummies are not looking that full. So I'm sure they, they haven't had lack of food that we should be concerned of. We're about, but, um, ah, hello. But I'm sure they're quite happy. I just, uh, I wonder if I move slightly forward, if we'll get a better view of them, because they're the. Maybe not. Hello. So you see now that they're definitely awake, she's pretty much gone and said hello to everyone. So she goes and they rub their heads and it's a, a good way of being like, oh, hello, we're friends, we're in the same pride. How you been? How was your sleep? Let's start moving now. There's always one that wakes up and, and gets everyone going. I think she's definitely um, starting to move, <laughs> making sure her metabolism has definitely kicked in. And it's always an efficient way of just pushing everybody else around. You know, once you start urinating and defecating when they're, where they're sleeping, <laughs> I don't think the rest of them will want to stay there. Afi Bam Bunny, I think that's the name if I got it correctly. If I didn't, I'm so sorry. Can they die from ticks? You'd like to know. Um, they won't necessarily die from ticks. However, what can happen is that if they lose condition or if they injured, then a lot more ticks would come into them and then they will help um, with the worsening of their general condition. And then that's probably, it'll lead ultimately along with other causes to their death. But no, they don't, uh, as far as I'm aware, they don't die of conditions. Like for example, certain species of dog can, you know, if certain very terrible species of ticks um, give them different diseases or anything else. I could be um, wrong, but as far as I know, that is the case. I will, however, double check on my facts later on and will definitely let you know tomorrow morning. I think they are just going towards the back. Right, I wonder. I'm just trying to see where they're going and see where we could get potentially the best view of them. I think I'm gonna try moving back, see if maybe we can see them from there. Uh, Liz, yes, as far as I know, Amber Eyes is not with the Pride. Um, as far as I know, her last tracks were seen not too far from here. Um, but um, still not around, we still haven't seen her. Let me see where I'm going. The last thing I want to do is, you know, bump into something and have to change a tire with a bunch of lions around here. Alright, I think that's better. 
I'm glad I can still drive. There we go. This is probably a better view of all of them. It's still a bit far, but I think that I'm just gonna stick around here <laughs> while they move around. Oh my goodness, isn't that precious? All of them moving and just playing with each other. I see all the bellies going up in the air. I don't think this particular one is suckling. It seems just to be also grooming <laughs> grooming the mother. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's precious. Look at that wonderful hug. Oh. You see, there's something very special always about the bond in the lion pride between mothers and cubs. Always a rough one, for sure, but you know, when they allow us glimpses into, into this particular bond of theirs, I find it so, it's almost so humbling, so, so unique. Froline, um, to identify the leader of the pride, you normally there are a couple of things you can look into. Normally the leader of the pride tends to be the oldest female in some prides. They're all a bit um, different. So if you look at the one that's slightly older, more tattered ears, a bit more scars, and it's a good chance that that's the one. If not, normally the one that starts leading them, the one that gets up and then everybody starts moving around, you know, they start following the leader like the song says. In this case, I have a strong feeling this particular female could be the leader because she's the one that's been moving around and, you know, she got up and walked this way and then when the kudu was alarming, she's the one that walked there. However, I'm not 100% uh, sure of the, the dominance between the females on, of the Inkahuma Pride. So if any of the long-term viewers are there and they have a specific idea of who it might be, please do feel free to let me know using the hashtag SafariLive as I would very much like to like to you know get a bit more into their character and get to know them a bit better because hopefully I'll be seeing them a lot more oh look at that I just find it so funny how they always bump heads and that's the uh, you know their greeting I think maybe that buffalo took it out of them today like you know those little 10 minutes of very intense courage as they say looking for the buffalo because they get up they start moving and they're like oh no 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 maybe not yet I'm still tired <laughs> you see they've got very rough tongues so if you've got a cat or a dog at home and I'm sure if they've licked you before it's very it's almost like sandpaper and why it is the way it is it's because they've got little granules little like dots in their tongues and that's where everything it's almost like a comb so if you can imagine they start pretty much combing their hair and everything that's not supposed to be there oh, maybe she found a tick in there that she's trying to get out look at that <laughs> oh, oh no <laughs> it's my turn now mom I want the loving at least they're quite nice between each other and sharing the love. Eclair, I believe these cubs are still suckling. Um, I saw them earlier and I think you guys, am I right? Did you see them this morning, Sam? Yes, they also saw them this morning suckling. So definitely they're not just surviving on milk and I'm sure most of their diet is coming now from meat. However, they can suckle for the first maybe six months of their life roughly, but they're a lot older than that. Hmm, maybe I've got my facts wrong. Um, but uh, definitely gonna start weaning very, very soon. They've got the right size. I think there are actually three cubs in there. So ones that she's grooming, the one to the right and then the one to the left that's just kind of wanting to get all the attention. <laughs> Angela, 
thank you so much. So I was right. Yay! I'm finally starting to get to know these girls a bit. Apparently this girl that we're looking at, she is the oldest of the pod. So it's a very good chance that she is the leader and she's the one that, you know, takes all the or makes all the important decisions in terms of where to go, what do they do and when they start uh, moving around. So you see, probably because she's the one with the most experience or she'll be able to lead the pride. <sighs> While we leave this lions, uh, let's go to Taylor who's got an awesome surprise for all of you.